Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our morning inspiration. Saturday, March 9th, 2024. I hope you are all doing well and I hope you are in good spirit. And I pray that the Lord will continue to be with you and may his face continue to shine upon you and give you peace. It's another beautiful day to be alive and we are thankful that the Lord had spared us to see this beautiful Sabbath morning. Now, our reading today comes to us from 1 Samuel chapter 2, reading verses 12 to 25. And it says, Now the sons of Eli were sons of Belial. They knew not the Lord. And the priest's custom with the people was that when any man offered sacrifice, the priest's servant came while the flesh was in seething with a flesh oak of three teeth in his hand. And he stuck it into the pan, or kettle, or cauldron, or pot, all that the flesh oak brought up, the priest took for himself. So they did in Shiloh unto all the Israelites that came thither. Also, before they burned the fat, the priest's servant came and said unto the man that sacrificed, Give flesh to roast for the priest, for he will not have sudden flesh of thee but raw. And if any man said unto him, let them not fail to burn the fat presently, and then take as much as thy soul desireth. Then he would answer him, Nay, but thou shalt give it me now, and if not, I will take it by force. Wherefore, the sin of the young men was very great before the Lord, for men abhorred the offering of the Lord. But Samuel ministered before the Lord, being a child, girded with a linen ephod. Moreover, his mother made him a little coat and brought it to him from year to year when she came up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. And Eli blessed Elkanah and his wife and said, The Lord give thee seed of this woman for the loan which he lent to the Lord. And they went unto their own home. And the Lord visited Anna so that she conceived and bare three sons and two daughters. And the child Samuel grew before the Lord. Now Heli was very old, and heard all that his sons did unto all Israel, and how they lay with the woman that assembly at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he said unto them, Why do ye such things? For I heard of your evil doings by all these people. Nay, my sons, for it is no good report that I hear. He make the Lord's people to transgress. Twenty-fifth and last. If one man sin against another, the judge shall judge him. But if a man sin against the Lord, who shall entreat for him? Notwithstanding, they hearken not unto the voice of their father, because the Lord would slay them. Amen. We give God thanks this morning for his word again. This is a very profound and powerful reading this morning. I hope that we were listening to the reading and when you have some time, you can go back and read chapter 2 of First Samuel. Now, for those of us who are not familiar with the story of Eli and his sons, Eli was a priest of Israel and his son was working in the temple with him, his two sons. Now, Eli's sons, they work in the temple or they were the priest's assistants in the temple. So I guess maybe you maybe can call them. They were like elders or something of that sort. They work very closely with the, with the priests. So they will help the priests to do whatever he needs to get done around the temple or during the time that sacrifice is being offered. Now these two boys, the Bible said that they did not know God. So as much as their father was a leader of the church or the priests, as much as they grew up in a Christian home, they did not know God. They did not have a relationship with God for themselves. So what can we learn from this? Going to church every Saturday or every Sunday don't make you a Christian. It's much more than that. So you could look pretty and dress well. If your life is not wrapped up with Jesus and if you haven't truly surrendered your heart to him, then you are not a Christian. A Christian simply means a follower of Christ. And what does followers do? 
they follow what Christ does. They follow what their leader is doing. So a lot of us sometimes complain about people offending us in the church and different things happening in the church. But keep in mind that not everybody that is in the church is converted or is a Christian. Just keep that in mind, okay? Because as we notice with these two boys, they grew up in the church. They came from a Christian home. They were not Christians. Neither did they have a relationship with God. And I find it strange how they were still employed in the temple. But he lied because they were his son. He was giving them preference. So he employed them in the temple. So as I said earlier on, they were assisting him with the daily sacrifices and so on. These boys, they were so evil. They did some things that it was just unspeakable. To do they were rebellious as a matter of fact eli couldn't he could not even control them he could not even talk to them whenever eli would try to talk to them they would back answer him or they would just ignore him because what as far as they are concerned they are the one in charge because what eli is an old man so they feel that okay then you know man he, he, he ashamed this is our time now, our time to shine, our time to rule. We are in charge now, so you need to go and take a back seat and relax yourself. Cool your tired foot, cool your old foot. These are the attitudes of the sons. Now, as the custom was, whenever the sacrifice or the burnt offering is offered, the, a portion of the meat would be boiled or being used, or the priest would get a portion of the, the sacrifice. To eat and this would be prepared in water so it would in other words it's like it, it's boiled sudden flesh so it's something like boiling it but the boys did not want it that way in fact they went to folks when they came to offer their sacrifice and told them that look here we want our portion to be roasted now we don't want it boiled we don't want it like that this is all we want it. so after god give specific instruction how they are supposed to consume this thing they are telling the people and telling god ultimately that this is what they want now how many of us are like that we tell god what he must do we tell god what we want and he must comply with our demands or else that's it or else is it that you give me what i want or me just about to stop serve you does that stop come church or whatever threats we want to make or demands we want to make to God and we treat God like God or or something disrespectful to God and not only that they also lie with the women in the church so whenever the women would come to the tabernacle to offer their sacrifices these boy would actually lay with them so they go in unto them sleep with the young girls these are priests basically you know, leaders in the church leaders who are there standing before god and the people and while all of this was going on he like got back report from the people that these boys his sons were doing all of these things and he just basically just talked to them he never fired them he doesn't stop them from serving in the temple he just give them a nice talking to and that was it okay then I just want you to know that what you're doing is not right. Come on. You need to throw them out. You can't have people coming into the temple to meet with God. To offer sacrifice for their sins. And then you have your sons causing the people to transgress further against the Lord. Don't you see what kind of craziness that was happening there? And so we in the church, we have to be careful about how we lead the church of God. We can't run it like we are run our own little store or our little patty shop. This is serious business. And same like Eli, I know there's a lot of leaders in the church today whose children are in similar situation. I have come across a lot of young people in the church whose parents are big leaders within the church. And they either they don't want anything to do with church or they live a double life. And I'm not sure if it is a case where the parents is not aware of the actions of their, their children. But a lot of these people, 
they come in the church and they are still participating in integral aspect of the church service but yet still they have another life outside of church i have seen it so often and they are allowed to continue now i am not saying that we should condemn these people but we have to handle the lord business with care and if you know that your child is living a double life and not only your child anyone serving in the church if we are aware that they are living a double life whatever that double life is if it is not in accordance with the will of god and what god expects us as christians to be doing then we cannot have these people serving in the church in any capacity or leading out in the church first they need to get their acts together before they can lead anybody because the people that come to god come to god for a blessing and they come to god to confess their sins and to have a worship experience with him and how is it that you're gonna have somebody up there advocating for the devil and also saying that they are advocating for god how does that work you gotta pick one side and i know some of these parents and some of these leaders in the church they are aware not everybody not all of them and i know some of them are embarrassed because the truth is that some of these persons they are not hiding be it their children or their colleagues or their friends or whomever so i don't know what is happening in the church of god but we need to be careful because just as god told eli because of what he allowed his children to do because yes in a sense he allowed them to continue doing what they are doing because the moment he found out that they were doing all of these things he should have thrown them out he should have stopped them from serving what the first part of the reading said what verse 12 said that these boys did not know god they did not have a relationship with god so how is it that they are going to lead out in a church service when they don't have a relationship with god what they're going to lead out say he should have done something about it than just talking to them obviously the talk never work and there's a lot of us who are doing the same thing there are some persons that should not be serving in the church of the lord why we don't do anything about it are we afraid are we giving them time to sort themselves out what okay if they need to sort themselves out well until they sort themselves out they cannot lead in the church of god because they are going to be stumbling block for those who come to worship do you understand and the bible says if a leader or anyone that cannot govern his house cannot be a leader in the church you will never be a good leader and in the same way if you don't have the right attitude and the right spirit you can't be a good leader you can't lead anybody do you understand what i'm saying so i am not here trying to knock anybody's children or whatever so i don't want anybody to take this personal but all I am saying is that there are some people in the church of God that should not be going up on the pulpit to do nothing. The Bible said that we must not become stumbling block in each other's way. And why you don't go to church to watch people, you go to church to worship God. We can't help being affected by these things sometimes because it's right there in front of our faces. What am I ultimately saying before you start to stone me? my point is that god expects better from us he gives us an outline and he gives us his rules and his principles that we are supposed to govern our lives by and how we are to deal with his business and he says that if you follow these guidelines it will be okay with you and yes sometimes you talk to this person and sometimes you take action against this person and it doesn't make a difference is that the person turn around and hate you or something or the person just don't change but you let god deal with it but you must do something one of the things i don't like to hear christians say you see somebody doing something and you refuse to say anything about it or to give guidance to the person you say let the holy spirit the holy spirit will convict them in due time or whatever what kind of nonsense is that? 
So what what are you there for? The Holy Spirit has his job, yes? And the Holy Spirit is the one that does convicting. But at the same time, aren't you supposed to be your brother's keeper? So you are telling me that if you see, if you see me stepping off a cliff to break my neck, you won't say anything to me. You're just going to leave me and say, okay, then let the Holy Spirit tell him say he must step off the cliff. That's rubbish. Come on. And I've heard a lot of people say stuff like this, even leaders. And maybe I am wrong, but I, I am just not convinced that that is brotherly love. I'm not saying that you should beat people over their head by any means or to, 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 to condemn, condemn them in any way. But the Bible says that what? When one has fallen, we need to help that person back up. The Bible says, iron sharpened iron. The Bible says that we should be our brother's keepers. We think all these texts are there for souvenir or we just think they're just there to decorate the Bible. Okay, you know, we need to get our, our, our acts together, friends, and we need to change our perception. God is in the business of saving souls. And it seems like a lot of us, we are in the business of seeing souls going down to hell. So we just stand on the sideline and now we business is about ourselves and, oh, you know, okay. You think that attitude is going to carry you to heaven? You're going to go straight down to hell with them too. Sound harsh, but it's true. So I am asking you, friends, let us change our attitude and let us be more conscious of what is happening in the church of God. Yes, there are some things that we just cannot control and some things that God will have to step in. But there are a lot of things that are in our hands where we can do something about it and we do nothing. We leave in everything. Okay, let God do it. Let God do it. Let God do it. I thought we were his core laborers. Huh? But let me not pressure you too much this morning. But friends, let us pray. And let us pray for each other. We need it. I need it. Because I, 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 no, I am no better than you. I am guilty just as you are guilty. But thank God for his grace and his mercies. Because we're not it for grace. A lot of us would go to church and just drop down the same place in there because we know what we are doing and we know what we allow. But hey, prayer changes things. And I believe in the power of prayer and I believe in you. You are not damned. It's not over and done with until you tell the Holy Spirit, you know, I don't to do it with him. Until you commit the unpardonable sin, there's still grace. They're waiting for you. And so all of us have the opportunity to repent and to turn from our wicked ways and turn to the Lord. Because he's there waiting for us to save us. So may you be encouraged. And may you find something in what I said this morning. You know, it's not a beating stick me I beat you with this morning. So don't take it personal. Just look into what I'm saying. And I would say, and as I say, go back and read the chapter. Read the chapter and pick the message from the chapter. So if you don't want to wanna, wanna pick the message from what I'm saying, Go back and read the chapter. The Holy Spirit will give you wisdom. Okay? So God bless you, friends. And continue to pray for each other. Continue to pray for me. While I continue to pray for you all. Amen.